I feel like we're getting better at putting this uh, rooftop tent up. It's our second night with it and uh, we're here in northern Arizona now, one of my favorite places. You guys who have watched this channel know that every time I come here I have to say it's my favorite place for some reason. What today we want to talk about is how to use a wide angle lens but also mistakes to avoid. It's very cold and windy. The conditions look very promising. It's a cold hard world outside my window Where people don't know which way to go I breathe you in cause you're Alright guys, so the first tip I want to give you is don't be too far away from your subject so what can happen is you can try and include too many things at once and what I have here is I have a bunch of beautiful lines leading up to this tree. This tree is my subject. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's a great subject. It's, it's visually, it's very interesting. But I also have here a little bit of a pond and the thing is, is if I want to include the pond and this and the tree and we got a beautiful sky right now too. The problem is if I want to include all that, I have to step back and when I step back, this far to include everything in there, that tree becomes really small. And that being my subject, you don't want it to be the smallest thing in your frame. It really elongates this. I'll take a shot for you guys and show you here. Now, it really makes this pond over exaggerated. It's just a small puddle and it makes that tree really small. It's a nice shot, but I want something a bit more dramatic. So I'm gonna go up there a little bit farther and really get that tree as my main focus, as my subject, that needs to be bigger in the frame. Your subject needs to be bigger than your foreground. So I've moved up a little bit higher. I actually have two shots here that I think I want to take. There's one right here where I'm at, and there's another one, a different angle over here that I like too. So I spent a little bit of time. I've come up closer to my subject, which is this uh, little pine tree here. Also the beauty of having a wide angle lens too is if you're not super close to your subject, like right now I'm at 16 millimeters, so where this rock is, it's actually further than my hyperfocal distance. So I'm not gonna have to focus stack. I can focus about a third into the frame, which is really nice. But the key thing is here, I've gotten closer to my subject. I've made the subject the biggest part of the photo, not the foreground, uh, or more of a focus anyway. It doesn't mean it takes up more room, but it's clearly the focus point. And that's the key is making sure your subject is clear. So the foreground doesn't take away too much attention from the subject. It complements it and doesn't overpower it. But shooting into the sun in this point right here is given that nice, the tree has that bright spot right next to it. So all your focus is your eye is going right to that bright spot, which is next to the subject. Right now, everything is complementing that tree. The light, the foreground, and everything around it. And the clouds are even streaking, so the clouds are almost like leading lines pointing right to that tree. So what I'll have to do is probably darken that down a little bit or when I exposure blend, I'll use the darker part of the clouds to really bring out those streaks in the clouds and point right to that subject, which is that tree. I stay home with you inside my head show you another mistake that you can make with a wide angle lens and that is not go low enough because if you have a, a puddle like this here it's not a very large puddle and if you're taking this photo at eye level your your foreground is not accentuated enough and if you go lower it will just it will widen that whole foreground and it'll look like a big big lake even though it's just that little puddle here and also if you're composing your photo and you're bringing your, the edge of the photo either on top or at the bottom a little bit closer to the edge, it will make it bigger or it will make it smaller if you're too far away from the edge. All right guys, well after a cold night, uh, we've come back out here this morning. The third mistake that I wanna talk about is trying to include everything in the photo. Cause there's, especially in a place like this, there is so much that's very eye catching. Instead of, you know, taking a shot, a landscape orientation with a wide angle lens to include everything in the photo. I just simply flipped it landscape or a portrait orientation. And then I made sure that everything in the photo 
complements each other. I eliminated everything, so I'm try not trying to include all the patterns on the side, all these you know rough formations on this other side. So what I'm doing is I am getting rid of anything that makes it overcomplicated, and I want to just simply use three elements: leading lines, a nice mid ground, and then the background, which is my subject, which is this beautiful rock formation up here. So it really goes hand in hand with mistake number one, which is not getting close enough to your subject. And the main point of that is you want your subject to be your subject. And if you start including everything that you like in the photo that <laughs> is, you know, it doesn't really help it. You know, these patterns over here look really nice and I like them, but they don't add to the photo. They make that subject smaller and they're doing the exact opposite of what I want. So I've eliminated, even though I like it, I've eliminated it and I'm using just these three elements that I like, nothing more, and I think it's a much more impactful photo. My whole world falls apart with just the thought of you But there's a fire in my soul that keeps me spinning Screaming now, it's the time to